What's up, ladies and guys? It's your stream Sherpa here, Walter Tuomi, representing Neo Defective Gaming. So you have had a bunch of questions for me in, in these streets, and these have been wide ranging. By far the most common question was what I would consider were the most important buys to start a stream. Look, streaming is an expensive hobby or career, so that's it. That's that's the title. Top five purchases when starting a stream career. A caveat is that these are things I purchased that I would consider invaluable to my career as a live streamer that I use pretty much to this day. So links to all these products are going to be in the description down below. Let's just get it started. When streaming in front of a camera, and you're going to need one of those, right? One of those camera things. Well, the most entry-level camera other than a Logitech C922 or C920 webcam that I still use as well, by the way, but what up my level of fidelity and true 1080p 60 frames per second crispiness is the Sony A5100. This camera can be a workhorse for you if you plan on creating original content for YouTube as well as stream for YouTube or Twitch and it's it's widely considered the best entry level DSLR for streamers. Newegg and Amazon list it for about $500 but you can find it for $300 on OfferUp and eBay which is a deal so just be sure you grab an AC adapter power supply instead of the regular battery and you're good. Once you're in this market you have control over your aperture and ISO settings which really separates you from the webcam crowd. I actually like it more than the Canon EOS Rebel cams when it comes to colors because it really shows off the it really shows less of the red on my face and gives me a more natural look without having to adjust my white balance. Moving on from cameras, you're going to have to go into lighting, which is pretty much necessary and will help your camera's fidelity and workload. Having a camera means you have adequate lighting. That's just the way it is. There are quite a few options out there, but the lighting I started out with was what I found on Amazon. It was just basic. It was like Limo or Limo Studio Soft lighting kit with umbrellas and TBH. I never really used the umbrellas. But the full spectrum bulbs are something invaluable to properly light your filming location. Let me put it out there. You won't find these bulbs in Home Depot or Lowe's. So if they shatter, which I've done, being lazy moving them around, it makes it a task to order some new ones. So either purchase a backup or, or don't. Point is, proper lighting can even change the way your webcam operates significantly. There's even the Elgato LED key light which is really professional looking, which I will be getting next week to finally update my old lighting. Consider also using a ring light. They really add full coverage to the dimensions of your face. There's really no reality I live in that says there's too much lighting. It just depends on the settings of your camera. So once people can see you on camera and your face is adequately lit, it's time for them to hear the words that are coming out of your mouth. And that would of course be my number three, which is a microphone, the Blue Yeti make some really good USB microphones and when I made my purchase of the Grey Yeti they were the established staple of the industry for quite some time. They were really not many alternatives as far as quality even though they were still limited in features compared to an XLR mic and mixer but the USB mic industry is moving rapidly and new affordable products are on the market which actually have some great features now. I would say even though I bought a Yeti I have since moved on to the XLR microphones, but since it's still a USB mic, I will suggest the Elgato Wave Series 3. It has a gain knob and headphone volume as well as software which you can use on your OBS studio of choice. You can still reach a quality that is comparable to XLR mics because of the video and audio compression that occurs in the background when streaming to Twitch or YouTube because they have to limit bandwidth to optimize their servers. Like the last I saw on Amazon, it was listed under $200, which pretty much makes it a, a deal. If you stream video games like myself, then another purchase you have to make is a pair of cans or headphones to monitor your overall stream sounds or hear your friends you might be playing with. I have had numerous headphones from USB to wireless to pro monitoring cans, but for my stream, I went with Audio-Technica and I used the ATH M50X. They strike that balance of pro cans to casual listener and if you do have a mixer it does come with a quarter inch adapter but if you're plugging directly into your headset jack or on the PC as well as any other device that you have that option as well. These headphones actually have some really good high-end clarity but focus mostly on bass. Also the pleather around the cups kind of cause my ears to sweat a little more than average but they look great and serve the purpose of entry-level streamer. If you've ever seen any streamer live, chances are they have an Elgato stream deck of some kind. And the reason is because it changes your stream from having a few scenes to click on to having a full suite of options at your fingertips. It really 
was game changing when it first arrived, and it still stands. There is no real competition to this device. The fact that they still support it with somewhat regular updates and functionality fixes shows that they really have no pressure to make any adjustments to the core hardware. They recently had a new version, and guess what? It just had more buttons. You can make button, <laughs> you can make buttons within these buttons, and like finger files, I guess, and even make one button do multiple tasks in sequence. It turns your OBS or XSplit into a real studio with everything from scenes to Discord volume control at your fingertips. So that's it. That's the top five purchases I made when I started streaming. Actually, how about a bonus tip? So there are a bunch of free stream overlays in the wild that other people might also be using, but how about you separate yourself from the sheep and go to fiber.com and have an artist create a custom package of animated overlays unique to you and you alone that no one else has. They don't just do overlays, they do custom logos and branding while also working with you directly. So that's it. The top five purchases I made when I started my streaming career. So if you like what you saw or need recommendations for, I don't know, other equipment, just be sure to comment down below and hit the subscribe button. I stream every Saturday, Sunday, Monday evening on twitch.tv slash neodefective. And you can also comment in the chat there as well. I'll see you then. Stay dirty, humans. How much more can you take? Yes!